What are we going to do today? Well, this ideal was from a viewer named Glenn. And, this, and his ideal was a blueberry oatmeal whiskey. Hey, and that sounded pretty damn good to me. So, hey, thanks, Glenn. But first things first. Welcome to Stillworks and Brewing. My name is Randy, and this is the channel that's all about home distillation and brewing. Okay, so first thing we want to talk about is let's talk about ingredients. All right, so in this recipe, I'm going to use 10 pounds of rolled oats. And on its own, it's kind of a bland tasting in a way, but it tends to take on other flavors that are around it. And uh, it does have a little bit of a creamy, earthy taste to me. So we got 10 pounds of rolled oats. Okay. So the next thing that we have recipe is we're going to use four and a half pounds of just regular yellow dent corn. Okay. And I feel corn is given a type of a it seems like it gives a type of sweetness, I mean, a perception of it anyway, and a creamy texture to whiskeys and bourbons to me. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to use is four and a half pounds of six row barley. All right, it has a slightly of a nutty taste maybe, and it's going to aid in, uh, it has a lot of diastatic power so it's going to aid in a lot of the uh, enzymes needed for the oats and the corn to convert those over to sugars. Okay, so it's a, a necessary thing. And then we got uh, two pounds of a rye. Now rye to me is, that's like a little bit of pepper. It's, you know, like when you put pepper on your steak, I guess. It's got a little peppery, spicy, peppery taste. And it is also malted too, so that will also help in the uh, conversion. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to use is four pounds of honey. Uh, honey will add a floral and a fruity taste. Okay. And the next star of the show is going to be blueberries. I have four pounds of blueberries. Uh, blueberries to me taste kind of Sweet, floral, um, it's got a woody taste and, and almost a musky taste to blueberries, but they're delicious. Okay, so how am I going to use blueberries? Well, I'm going I'm to have them ferment on, well, we'll get to this later, but I'm going to ferment them on the blueberries. And then uh, when we finish this whiskey, I'm still mixed up how I want to finish it. I might do half the run in, I don't know. I might do half the run with uh, blueberries added post fermentation, you know, while it's aging, and I might not. So we'll have to get, get back to that. Okay, so that's the ingredients we're going to use. Well, let's get into how we're going to use it, how we're going to make it, okay? Okay, the first step that we got to do is we got to cook our corn. So what we're going to do is we'll put our corn in. I got 190 degree water, maybe a little bit higher than that, but it will drop. Uh, so I'm going to put my corn in the hot water and we're going to cook it for an hour and a half. And then at the, uh, after an hour goes by, then we're going to put in our rolled oats into that water. and Because we'll, it don't really need to be cooked because it was steam rolled and all that. So it really don't need to be cooked like the corn. Does. At the hour mark, that's what I'm going to put that in. So let's put our corn in here. Just want to make sure we stir it in. I did put about, about three gallons of water in here. Just stir your corn in so it starts cooking. As soon as I get it all put in, I will uh, check my temperature. To make sure it's still 190 at least. Okay, right, there's our corn. Uh, and our 
Pemper is 194. Okay, so it's been one hour. And I did every once in a while come out and stir it. Okay, it looks like corn soup. A little thick. Alright, let me check, double check my temperature. Okay, we're at 181, 182, somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stir in my oats. Okay, and then we'll let them all cook for about a half hour, and that should be plenty. Okay, so let me move the camera down so you can see what's going on. Okay, like I said, I got 10 pounds of quick oats or oatmeal. I might have to add a little bit more water to uh, to this, I don't know. But I can imagine it's going to get nice and thick. There's a half of one. It's going to look like a porridge. I'll probably have to put a little bit more heat up underneath this just to get the temperature back up. Just add it in slow, get a good stir. Okay, so all that oatmeal is stirred in. You can see how thick it is. Okay, so we're going to thin it out in two different ways. Okay, so first I'm going to put in two teaspoons of a high temperature enzyme. One, two, two teaspoons. And I'm going to put in my uh, rest of my grains. I'm going to put my barley in. Here's my rye. Oops. And it will start thinning up pretty fast, to be honest with you. Here's my rye. That is a malted rye. I, mean, I can see it thinning up already. Let me get uh, the six row barley in there. between the high temperature enzymes because it uh, we did have to make sure that it was uh, below 160 so it's right at 160 and it will calm down temperature will come down as so I'm adding the last bit of this grain I made this oatmeal whiskey before and it turned out fantastic Okay, let me get this mixed in. Okay, so I got all of that grain and everything mixed in. Uh, it's pretty thick, but you can see it thinning up as we speak. So, I'm going to set my timer for, well, about an hour and 15 minutes, I'm guessing. Maybe an hour and a half. And by then, it'll all be getting... Uh, and out a lot and then we'll do a starch test to make sure that all them sugars is converted over and uh, then we'll be ready to move on to the next step so I'll see you in that let's say an hour and a half alrighty the uh, mash is getting ready to finish up so while we're waiting on that let's get our blueberries ready to go uh, like I said before I got four pounds of blueberries mmm good too so what I want to do all I'm going to do is break them open and smash them a little bit Just to help get that flavor out. Might not be as easy as I thought. Put 
Alright. Like I said, we're just going to mash these up, break them open, that's all I want. And then we're going to add them to the ferment bucket, and then what we'll do is, uh, we'll be sparge over, so. Like I said, I just want to smash them a little bit. And, uh, this ain't hard to do. Alright, so let me get this done, and we're going to be ready to uh, start sparging here shortly, okay? Okay, so let's do another starch test. So what I'm going to use, because this is so thick, I'm going to use this little screen to push down, just so I get liquid. I'll put it in my, my cup here. Drop iodine. Let's roll around a little bit. And it pretty much goes right back to the original color. So that means that the uh, conversion is done. Let me get rid of this. So the conversion is done. Real sweet. Yum. Okay. Let me get cleaned up a little bit and then we're going to get ready to start the next. Okay, so let me tell you what's going to go on. My mash is in my pot here. It's ready ready to go. I got my mash, my uh, sieve, sieve bucket right here. I put a mash bag in that. And so what we'll do is we'll take the, uh, the mash out of the pot, put it in the sieve. It will drain through the hose, drain into the bottling bucket there, which has a valve, and then, <coughs> excuse me, drain into my my uh, fermentation bucket. All right, so let's get that going. Everything's nice and warm. And it helps kind of dissolve everything up. There's two. Yeah, one more. Okay.
Okay, so it's a little hot out here today. Uh, I have to say, oatmeal mash is sure a mess. You get it all over you. I had to do a lot of squeezing on the bag and, and sparging. Uh, but I think I finally got it done. So let's see what our... It sure smells good. Let's see what our, our starting gravity is going to be. And it looks like... 1.085. Woo! I'm happy with that. Okay. I mean, I'm sticky all over. Like I said, it's 1.085. Uh, it's a little bit too warm for my yeast like normal, so I'll put it in the fermentation room and let it cool off. And later on tonight, or maybe even tomorrow morning, we're going to put some daddy yeast on that. A couple tablespoons. And uh, one thing I will do is I'll use a blow-off tube because I got, in the past, these oatmeals, they, they get pretty darn violent. So I'm going to use a blow-off tube just to keep down the mess. Alright? So, the smell of the, the uh, mash is fantastic. Um, it's as sweet as sweet can be. It's got good blueberry flavor, so I hope some of that will carry over into the distillate. That would be fantastic. Uh, so, I guess the last thing I got to do is clean up my mess, go get a shower, and, uh, hey, I want to thank you for stopping by, and we'll see you next time here on Still Works in Brewing. What a mess. But it's worth it. Hey, I always do ask you guys to do a couple things for me, and uh, hey, if you get a chance, please hit that subscribe button, share us with your friends, give us that thumbs up, uh, leave a comment, I'll get back to you as soon as I can, I love the comments, uh, a lot of great people out there, okay, okay, so where are we, oh, I had to go change my clothes, ooh, it's hot, anyway, we got the mash done. It's in the fermentation room. It's just a little bit warm for the yeast. Uh, we did end up with 1.085, which that was fantastic. Uh, so what did we do right and what did we do wrong? Well, what we did right is, like I said, 1.085 was very good. Uh, it tastes fantastic. I mean, super sweet, of course it would be as full of sugar. Uh, what did we do wrong? Well, one thing I forgot, and I thought in the past, which I should have done, is I should have thrown a couple handfuls of rice hulls in it. Uh, I mean, I have, I just didn't think about it. Uh, that would help keep it separate. But what that oatmeal does is it, it clumps up. And, and you had I had a heck of a time trying to, uh, even with my sieve, with the bag trying to get it I had to squeeze and all that stuff I had a tough time with it so I messed up with that um, I should have used a couple handfuls of rice hulls that sure would have helped um, I probably could get away with just a little bit less grain it seemed like I had a lot of a lot of, a lot of sugar in there so but that's okay uh, so What's next? Well, the next thing is, is we add yeast into it. It's going to ferment out for probably a week or ten days. Uh, and one thing I will have to do, I don't know if I mentioned it, I will use a blow-off too because sometimes in the past, the oatmeal mashes, it will become pretty violent when it starts to ferment. And... I think with the blow off, blow off tube, you know, it will keep a lot less of mess. You know, if I use a rubber bubbler, it, it just <laughs> it puts it everywhere. Um, uh, okay. So, I guess the next thing we'll do is let it ferment, and then we will uh, distill it out. And then we'll make the decision on how I want to finish it. Uh, so I got a little bit of time to worry about that. Um... 
I guess the last thing I've got to say is, hey, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next time here on Still Works in Bruin. Cheers, everybody.